December the 11th, 2002, at Europe's spaceport in Kourou, French Guiana. Liftoff for Ariane Flight 157, the maiden flight of Europe's heaviest launch vehicle Ariane 5 ECA, better known as the 10-ton Ariane. On board, two communication satellites. A little later in the night, the emotional voice of an interpreter relays the message from flight director and Ariane Space CEO Jean-Yves Le Gall. The mission has not been successful. Vernon in France, home to the Département Grosse Propulsion Liquide de Snecma Moteur, the company that has been producing engines for Europe's Ariane launchers for decades. It's here that the Vulcan 1 engine of the generic Ariane 5 launcher was born. It's known as a cryogenic engine because it burns a mix of liquid hydrogen and oxygen, forming water vapor and releasing highly concentrated energy pushing Ariane 5 up into space. The Vulcan 2 engine is built on the same principle as its predecessor, but with 20% more thrust. The increase created a few headaches for the engineers, such as the design of the turbo pumps turning at more than 36,000 revolutions per minute, injecting liquid oxygen and hydrogen into the combustion chamber. ESA launched the Vulcan 2 program in 1995. It involves intense cooperation among the major players in Europe's space industry. So where was the problem back in December 2002? The nozzle failed, the big cone directing the hot combustion gases towards the bottom. Guy Corteil, director of Snecma Moteur Vernon, explains. The atmospheric pressure bearing on the outside of the nozzle doesn't exist in space. When we reached altitude, the upper part of the nozzle deformed quite considerably. This deformation changed the heat transport inside the nozzle, and the melting point of the materials was exceeded. The launcher couldn't be steered and veered off course. The safety mechanism provided by the CNES, the French space agency, entered into action, and the launcher was destroyed in mid-air. As soon as the Board of Inquiry had released these findings, engineers got down to work to ensure this failure wouldn't happen again. Pooling their knowledge and the information and results from tests and simulations, the European centers involved in Vulcan 2 were able to identify two main areas that needed looking at. Heat fluxes and the mechanical resistance of the nozzle structure. Back to Guy Cortel. We added a number of reinforcements in the form of an external shell. We strengthened certain parts of the nozzle by welding added all over its upper half. The stability of the nozzle's heat flux was improved by increasing the flow of liquid hydrogen in the cooling channels. It arrives at a temperature of 250 degrees below zero in hollow tubes inside the nozzle. So much for the theory, but does it work? The test bench is tucked away in an area of woodland in Normandy known as BF-50. Three hours before the firing, everybody disappears into the control stand, shut off from the rest of the world by a door designed to resist anything. The countdown to the test firing is identical to that at Europe's spaceport in French Guiana. The same concentration is written on the faces of technicians and the launch director. Hundreds of trial runs have been carried out here, but they're never routine. The thrust of one Vulcan 2 engine is roughly the same as three Airbus A340s taking off. As soon as the test is over, there's a quick debriefing between the launch director and the facility manager. They'll then give way to the engineers who have analyzed the data gathered during the test firing. The modifications made to Vulcan 2 have been tested in dozens of trials. Carole Ouyeux is the facility manager. In our tests, we try to replicate the same thermal and dynamic conditions as if the engine were in flight. We identify anomalies and try to simulate possible breakdowns. And for the flight engines that will actually be used, we do fine-tuning during trials in order to meet the needs of the launcher. The qualification flight of the Ariane 5 ECA is now scheduled for early 2005. 
The recommendations of the Board of Inquiry were reaching far beyond the Falcon 2 engine. Everything is done to make this flight a success. But the only real test for a new launcher is the flight. And this cannot be tested on the ground. The 10-ton Ariane 5 should enable Europe to maintain its leadership in the commercial launch services market thanks to its capability to put several heavy satellites into orbit at a time. The big sister of the generic Ariane 5 will also be used to launch the ATV, a freight carrier for the International Space Station, and it's a prerequisite for Europe's future planetary exploration missions.